Heavenly Father, I need a gift of prophecy. Your word says in Ephesians 4 11 through 12, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You are the only God capable of giving the gift of prophecy to anyone. Please give me this gift, so that I can carry out your good work, here on earth, in Jesus' name I pray, Amen. The following day. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Stephen. You're welcome. How may I help you? I have something very important to discuss with you. May I sit? Sure, go ahead. Please sit. Pastor. For the past two weeks, I've been fasting and praying that God would give me the gift of prophecy and revelation, because I know that I've been called to be a great prophet. Last night after my prayers, I got an instruction from God to come here and meet you, so that you will lay hands and pray for me. That way, I'll receive the impartation I've been praying for. It is wonderful to see a young person like you, having the desire to be used by God. Never forget that we are in the perilous times. Therefore, you must be careful not to let corruption creep into you. If a science 4, one says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. A life worthy of the calling is a life that daily exhibits godly character, has moral courage and personal integrity, behaves maturely, and expresses thankfulness and gratitude to God for all he has done. This is a life that brings God glory. Okay, sir. I've heard all you said. Can we skip to the part of impartation now? Let us pray. After the prayers, Stephen received the gift of prophecy and revelation as he desired. <laughs> Selena, what happened? Why are you crying? Today, I was informed that I will not graduate with my set, because I have unresolved issues with my admission. I've tried to find out what the issue is, but it's impossible. What? And we've been making serious plans for your graduation ceremony all along. What are we going to do now? I don't know. If only I knew what the problem was, then I'd know how to deal with it. But right now, I can't tell what issue they were talking about. That is Selena walking past me. The Lord just told me something about her. Hello, Selena. How did you know my name? The Lord revealed some things about you to me. He has sent me to deliver you, if only you'll comply and do as the great prophet of the Lord shall command. Please go ahead. I'm ready to do as you say. I'm shocked that you got my name right. You have a problem with your school. It is time for you to graduate. But suddenly, an issue came out of nowhere. Yes sir. That is true. I'll reveal to you what the problem is and I'll pray for it to be resolved. But before that, you'll pay $200 to have access to this information and deliverance. Are you ready? Yes. I'll pay the money. I cannot let anything stop me from graduating at the right time. I'm ready to pay. All right. Come closer and I'll pray for you. Christina, it's nice to see you again. Are you here to finally invite me to your wedding? I wish I was. I have a serious problem, so someone recommended you to me. They said you know a very powerful man of God. Well, I know someone. He helped me when I had a problem with my graduation. Please help me. I want to meet with him. No problem. I'll take you there tomorrow. Prophet, please help me. I have a very serious problem. <laughs> I see. You've been told that you have a spiritual husband. And that is what is stopping you from getting married. The last person that broke up with you is the fifth person to propose to you. Whenever you get engaged and begin the preparation for your wedding, the man will lose interest in you. How did you know all that? It's true. That's exactly what I've been going through. I believe you're a true prophet. Please, help me. I'm tired of going in the same cycle. You have to go and pay to my secretary. When you've done that, bring your receipt to confirm your payment, and then I'll pray for you. 
but from what I can see, your case is unique and special. You will come back later to my house. I'll give you my address. When you come, I'll tell you what to do. No problem. I'll do anything to break free from this bondage. When Christina got to his home, he caused her to sleep with him as a solution to her problems. Ensure you do not mention this to anyone. If you do so, I'll know, and you will face the consequences. I'll not say a word about it. All I'm interested in is getting a solution to my problems. You can go. Your problems are over. You wicked woman. You better come back here. After all, you do not have anywhere else to run to by this time of the night. Get back into that house. I must deal with you today, the same way you've been dealing with me in this marriage. Franklin, your plans will not succeed. You want to kill me, right? I'm not coming in there today. It is better that I sleep here on the street, than enter that house. You'll get tired and come in. Wicked woman. I'll be waiting for you. What will I do? I can't stay out here all night. Sharon. Is your husband beating you again? I heard your voice from my home, that's why I came here. Is it about the same problem? Yes, it is. He doesn't understand that it's not my fault. I'm not God that gives children. I've told him to be patient, that someday, we'll have our children, and they will stay alive. He keeps blaming me for everything. It's definitely not your fault. But I have a solution for you. There is a man of God that has recently been working miracles for people. I've spoken with different women that he helped to resolve their marital issues. In fact, I was having a problem with my business, and he helped me. He's very powerful. Immediately you step into his office, he'll tell you everything that's bothering you. He was truly sent by God to deliver people out of their challenges. His name is Prophet Stephen. Please give me his address. I'll pay him a visit tomorrow. When I get home, I'll forward it to your email. You will definitely come back to testify. Thank you. I can't wait to do that. Good morning, Pastor. It is Prophet. Prophet Stephen, not Pastor. Have a seat. Please pray for me. I'm not satisfied with what's happening in my marriage. I can see that you're in need of children. You've tried three fertility procedures, but they failed. When you conceived and delivered the baby, it was a stillbirth. Since then, your husband and his family have been blaming you for this. Yes, sir. You're very correct. That is my life story. I've been called different names because of this. It's okay you can sit down. Because you have come to meet the great prophet of God. Your troubles are all over. But before we proceed, go to my secretary and pay for consultation. After that, you'll work for me for one week. This is to enable you to connect to the power that is at work in me. When you work for me and make things easier for me, God will work on your case and make everything easy for you. That is how I'm led to deliver you from this bondage. What kind of work are we talking about, sir? Just the usual chores. You'll come to my house to clean, cook and wash. And as a way of investing into the life of the anointed prophet, you will provide all you need to do these chores, including the food you'll cook. After that, you'll watch and see how your home will be filled up, with your desired number of children. Like I said earlier, when you work in my vineyard, you'll be rewarded with what you desire. Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. I'll do it. Please give me your home address, and what time of the day I'll come. I desperately need your blessing. Sharon. I noticed for the past one week that you've been going out at a particular time, and then you come home exhausted. Where is this place, and what are you doing there? I'm doing what is best for our home. According to the words of the Prophet, this is the only way I can unlock our blessings. 
when I work in his vineyard, God will in turn work in my vineyard, and give us children. What? So you've been running errands for some profit? Why will you let anyone deceive you this much? It's not deception. It works. I've seen a lot of women that did exactly as he commanded, and they received their expectations. That is all nonsense. I'll confront the so-called prophet to find out why he's taking advantage of people, even married women. Please, don't do it. I'm not complaining, and I'm not the first person to do these kind of chores for the prophet. Please don't make my case different. They're not ordinary chores. The work I'm doing is highly spiritual. Today is the last day of this assignment. Let my efforts not be in vain. I don't care about what you have to say. I'll find out who is this person that has disrespected me by turning my wife into his errand girl. Why are you doing this to people? You're taking advantage of innocent, desperate people. Is that what you have been called to do? Is this a part of the Lord's work? Who are you? And how dare you question the prophet of God? Don't you have any respect for the anointing over my life? You do not deserve any respect from me because you've also disrespected me. I'm not here to insult you, rather to correct you. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If you have truly been called by God, it is wrong for you to coerce or deceive people. You will corrupt the gift of God in your life by doing what the Lord has not directed you to do. Do not abuse the grace of God. Stop misusing what you have, or it will be taken away from you, and you will face the judgment of God. Look at you trying to correct me. Do you know more scripture than me? What miracle have you ever performed? Do you know how long I prayed and fasted, to be where I am today? If what I'm doing is wrong, then it shouldn't produce results. The Bible says that God will have mercy on whom he'll have mercy. I am special to God, and he will always have mercy on me. So no matter what I do, as long as I'm doing what he has called me to do, he will continue to use me. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. So for your good, and the good of the church of God, desist from deception. What nonsense? How can an ordinary man try to correct me, a great prophet of God? They even let him into my office? I need to get him fired. Sharon, I'm truly sorry that I pushed you to the wall. Now I realize that I've been hard on you concerning our inability to have children. From this moment onwards, I will not let anyone accuse or insult you for our childlessness. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Despite everything, the prophet ignored the advice he was given and continued to take advantage of people. He became more arrogant, extorted people, and misused the gift he had. Sir, please pray for me. So you casually walk into my office, and demand that I pray for you without showing respect? Where is the receipt of your payment? Here it is. When I'm done attending to you, go back and pay an additional fee. The price of my service has increased. Please, I do not have any more money on me. Then you're not ready to be delivered. How can you expect to receive blessings free of charge, when even your salvation was purchased with a high price? This the problem I have with so many people that come here. In fact, you have to make the payment before I attend to you. After making all that payments, I'm leaving without a solution. I thought people said that his prophecies are accurate. Why was he saying that I came because I have issues with my marriage, when I'm not married? He didn't even give me the chance to explain that it's concerning my failing business, before he angrily walked me out of his office. Anyways, I've learned my lessons. I'll never trust in any man to solve my problems. I'll go back and pray and believe God to help me. Why is it becoming extremely difficult to receive any revelations concerning people? I can't remember the last time I had a good dream. All I'm doing now is to make guesses, based on what I think. I hope that I don't get into trouble, or disgrace myself one day. Good day sir. How may I help you? Please pray for me. I am currently 39, and will soon turn 40 and I'm still single. 
I need to get settled maritally. I thought as much. I want you to visit me at home. Why? Can't the prayers be done here and now? No. Your visit to my house is for something different, which you should understand as an adult. You'll have the privilege of taking intimate care of me. Not everyone has this kind of access to me. I'm offering you this opportunity, because that is what I'm led to do as a prophet. With all due respect, sir, I cannot do that. I am a believer, and can never engage in an ungodly act. Am I not also a believer? You are not the first person coming with such problem, so if you will not do as I say, then leave my office. That can never be me. If that is the only solution, then I'll rather remain single. But I heard that he prayed for Christina and she finally got married. Did he make such demands from her? I have to find out. Christina, I met the prophet you recommended, but instead of praying for me, he made some unexpected demands from me. Please, tell me the truth. Did he do the same to you? Yes. He did. What? And you gave in? I had no option. That's not true. You had the option of walking away. How could you do that? I do not understand how he can call himself a man of God. I will ensure that I expose him. I'll put it everywhere on social media and label him a false prophet. He has come to the end of his road. After charging exorbitant fees, he'd deceive and take advantage of the ignorant. That is a fake prophet. I said it. I warned him to be more careful with the way he misuses the gift of God in his life. God can never be mocked. Now the whole world is talking about him. And countless ladies are agreeing that he has slept with them, some with evidence. This is terrible. No one should ever bring shame to the house of God like this. I pray he repents. Titus 2, 12, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. God bless you. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notification to be informed whenever we upload a new video. Also like and comment on this video. Thanks for watching. We're grateful for your constant support. See you in the next one. God bless you.